As you know by now, development is different across the world and happens differently in different countries. Development can be really difficult for some countries, depending on their wealth, depending on their raw materials, depending on their technology, all of these things play a role in how a country develops. And because of these inequalities, some countries are trying to make development more equitable, or in other words, more fair and more equal. differences in development can be boiled down to one main problem. The difference in price between raw materials and processed and manufactured goods. And this is what we call the trade gap. Because raw materials and processed goods are sold at different prices, it causes a trade gap between LEDCs or less economically developed countries and MEDCs or more economically developed countries. It is important to remember that LEDCs find it difficult to purchase processed and manufactured goods from MEDCs, and this is because processed goods are sold at a higher price. Often LEDCs don't have enough money to purchase these expensive goods, thus making development even harder. If LEDCs are able to import these manufactured goods, it would really assist in their development. In this entire scenario, MEDCs are benefiting. They are purchasing raw materials from LEDCs at low prices, and they are able to process these raw materials into manufactured goods because they have the equipment and the skilled labor, and then they are able to sell these manufactured goods back to LEDCs at much higher prices. So ultimately, MEDCs are benefiting from this type of trading relationship, whereas LEDCs struggle. Let's look at two different case studies to really understand this trading relationship. Ethiopia sells raw coffee to Europe. So in this scenario, the raw coffee is the raw material that is being sold to Europe at a fairly low price. The MEDC in this scenario would then process this coffee into instant coffee and then sell it back to Ethiopia at a higher price. So the key thing to take away from this example is that the prices of raw materials are much lower than the prices of manufactured goods. The second example that I want to look at is something called the tea co-op which exists in Sri Lanka. Now, Sri Lanka is famous for their tea. Sri Lanka could simply export this tea to other MEDCs, and those MEDCs could then process the raw material. However, the tea co-op has helped people in Sri Lanka add a tiny bit of processing to this tea to be able to sell it at a slightly higher price. People in Sri Lanka can now process this tea into tea bags. So you can see they're taking a raw material and processing it into a good that can be used immediately. And this tiny bit of processing really helps people in Sri Lanka be able to sell this tea at a higher price. Not only are they able to sell their tea at a higher price, but this tea factory also provides jobs for people. So the key thing to take away from this scenario is that just a little bit of processing of a raw material can really increase the trading price of that product. We are used to countries developing in a normal, usual way using technology and industry or industrialization as we spoke about in another video. Now this is called conventional development, where a country uses advances in technology and industrialization to help them develop, aka the normal way of developing. Conventional development doesn't aim to reduce poverty overall. It allows certain individuals in that country to become wealthier and doesn't reduce poverty overall. However, we have something else called alternative development. 
Now the aim of alternative development is to reduce the overall poverty of that country by getting the local people involved. And this involvement of the community drastically reduces the poverty overall for that country. It also focuses on meeting basic human needs rather than just making certain individuals wealthier over time. Alternative development focuses on the well-being of people and it aims to increase the quality of life. It focuses on improving general health and education and generally just strives to ensure equality for all. The tea co-op that we spoke about happening in Sri Lanka would be an example of alternative development. Lastly, we are going to look at sustainable development. Now, this is very important going forward. It's a very relevant topic right now. Sustainable development essentially looks at how can a country develop while preserving the natural environment. It's not bad for countries to want to develop. People need to advance and people need to move forward. However, if we are depleting natural resources and destroying the environment, that means that future generations are going to suffer. So essentially, sustainable development strives to maintain that level of advancement in a country without harming future generations. Some key points about sustainable development is that it does not damage the environment. It needs to use local resources in the sustainable way. In other words, it needs to use local resources without depleting them for future generations. It aims to use very simple technology that is not expensive to run. And it also encourages community projects. And this makes us think of alternative development. It also strives to develop the skills of local people. And all of this contributes to the well-being of people as well as the well-being of the environment for future generations to come. And that is it for conventional, sustainable and alternative development. Go back and rewatch anything that you need to recap. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Please subscribe to my channel below and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!